How's it going, Eliminators? Today we're gonna to be working on a Furman 1050 80cc generator. So let's get right into it. So we got a Furman 80cc generator here. This is just a little guy, but my customer said the issue was that it wouldn't start. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around to this side. I'm going to pull the high tension lead or the spark plug cap here. We're gonna remove the spark plug. And then what I'm gonna do is hook up my spark tester, pull this thing over and check to see if it has spark. Now in order to get a 13 16 spark plug socket on to the spark plug, I had to remove the two 10 millimeter bolts. So I'm able to lift up slightly on the gas tank to fit the socket in. And now now I can remove the plug. Looking at the plug, we can see that it's quite fouled. So this has either been burning a little bit of oil or it's been running rich. So we're gonna clean this up on the wire wheel and just have a look to see if there's any gunk built up inside of there. If there is, I'm gonna go ahead and change it. But it looks like this is a six heat range plug. So it's a E6RTC Bosch plug. But with the spark plug out, now I can hook up my gap type spark tester. So we're gonna put the high tension lead onto this end. And then I'm going to ground that little clip to the frame and we're gonna check for spark. And testing for spark with the spark plug out makes it a lot easier to pull. So with our switch on the on or run position, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the pull start and we're gonna see if there's spark. So we can see that this generator is producing spark. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the air box by removing these two thumb screws here. Once you have the air box removed, you can go ahead and remove your air filter. Now, if you don't have a spark tester like I do, you can take your choke and put it to the off position. Take a little bit of carburetor cleaner, spray it into the carburetor, go ahead and pull your machine. And if it fires up and then dies, then you know that your machine has spark and that it's just not drawing fuel from the carburetor because it's burning off the carburetor cleaner that you're spraying in. So so basically you're putting fuel into your engine and you're bypassing the carburetor. So using a little bit of carb cleaner is just another way you can test for spark. Moving on, in order to remove the carburetor, I'm gonna have to remove this little mesh piece here. There's a solid piece of plastic up near the carburetor that just limits some of the airflow going into the carb, acts as a restrictor plate. Now that little plastic piece that went in between the air box and the air filter, it limits the amount of airflow that goes into your carburetor. And we have to remember that when there's less air, there's more fuel. So that richens your fuel mixture, which is what you want to do in the winter time when it's cold. Now come summertime, if this engine starts to run a little boggish and it's getting too much fuel and it's running too rich, all my customer has to do, which I will explain to him, is remove the air filter cover, remove the air filter, and just turn that little plastic piece around so that the restrictor plate is in the bottom right corner. And what that'll do is it'll maximize the amount of air going into the engine, which will slightly lean out the carburetor and return it to its normal air fuel mixture. Next up, we're going to have two 10 millimeter nuts here, and you can remove that using a 10 millimeter millimeter socket. Once you have those two 10 millimeter nuts removed, you can come up here and remove our overhead valve breather tube. Just give that a little pull and lay it down to the side. And now we can remove our air box. And here's a good little tip. There are little brass spacers and we can see that this one didn't really want to come out. So just make sure that when you're removing your air box that you don't lose those. Now on this piece of equipment, they've installed a fuel valve directly off of the fuel tank. So I have mine in the off position. What I'm going to do is disconnect the fuel line from the carburetor. Okay, now that our carburetor is loose, we can see that it will not pull off of the carburetor studs and that's because our throttle linkage is hooked up here. So you're going to notice that they put a little bend on that and we're just going to pull that throttle linkage directly straight out. And once you have the throttle linkage disconnected, go ahead and disconnect your spring. So we now have our carburetor removed. We're ready to take it to the workbench for disassembly and cleaning. First things first, you're gonna wanna lay down a little shop towel. This has a little bit of grease on it, but it is clean, I've wiped it off. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is remove our throttle positioning screw. Before I remove the screw, I'm gonna turn it all the way in until it bottoms out, and I'm gonna count the number of turns it takes until it gets to that position. That will let me know what the factory setting was, or at least the setting that it was before it was brought to me. Then we'll be able to remove our pilot jet, or our low speed idle jet. Once you remove the pilot jet, it looks like there's three little holes on this jet here. So basically what we're doing is I'm using a tiny little piece of steel and I'm poking it through to the point where it goes all the way through and is visible in that middle hole because on these little pilot jets, it's going to be hard to see, but there is a tiny little hole and you wanna make sure that that little hole there is absolutely clean and free of debris. If that's not clear, it's gonna surge. We're going to remove the little 10 millimeter bolt on the bottom of the carburetor here to remove the sediment bowl. And these carburetor bolts can sometimes prove to be a little difficult to remove. So I use a woodworking vise to hold onto the carburetor while I loosen off that bolt. So we have the sediment bowl off. That's gonna be your first sign if there's dirt in the carburetor. There's a little bit at the bottom, but not too much. So the issue is most likely in either the main jet, but on this design, 
because the carburetor bolt right there that holds the bowl in goes here, your fuel travels through this little pickup jet right here. So that's where your fuel goes in to the pickup tube and then goes down to the main jet. So if that's clogged, you're not going to get any fuel flowing through your carburetor, which means no fuel is going to go into your engine. So we're going to remove that using a standard flathead screwdriver. Once you have that pickup jet removed, we're going to go ahead and remove the float pin and we're going to pull the float and the needle valve out as well. Now, before I go ahead and remove that float pin and the float, I just want to pressure test the needle valve and we can see here that we're holding at five PSI, which means that I do not have to replace that needle valve. And using an LED light shining it through the carburetor, we can see that the main jet is fairly clean. So it must have been a case of this little pickup jet that was clogged. And sure enough, that little pickup jet seems to be clogged. And using an oxyacetylene tip cleaner, I've just gone ahead and poked that jet through. So we can see that it picked up a little bit of gunk on the way through. Now, chances are I could put this carburetor back together and there is a likely chance that it would fire up. However, there could be some little tiny ports inside of this carburetor that are still gummed up. For instance, we have those two little ports right here. You're going to want to find something that you can use to poke out those holes, or you're going to go ahead and use your carburetor cleaner. Shout out to Permatex for sending some of that our way. And you're going to use your pressurized carburetor cleaner and go in here and just blast all of those little tiny ports. And you're going to see some carb cleaner come out and you're going to want to make sure that this carburetor is perfectly clean from inside and out. You're going to want to make sure that your main jet is clear. You're going to want to make sure that your fuel seat or your needle inlet, that brass piece is clear and free of debris. And if you have an air compressor, I would highly suggest taking some compressed air, shooting it through the main jet, shooting it through the inlet and make sure that the air blows out freely so that you know there's no blockage on the main fuel intake pickup here. And on this carburetor here, we can see that there are a couple little holes on the throttle side of the carburetor near the throttle butterfly valve. So you're going to want to make sure that you spray some carb cleaner in there as well. However, like you've seen in previous videos, I'm going to be using my six liter ultrasonic cleaner. If you'd like to see how well these ultrasonic cleaners work, you can click the link in the top right of your screen now, and that'll take you to a video where I go a little more in depth about these ultrasonic cleaners. So I'm going to go ahead and get this carburetor ultrasonically cleaned and I'll bring you back once it's done. Now, while I have my carburetor cleaning in the ultrasonic cleaner, you may be able to hear it in the background. What I'm gonna do is take this, put it into a little clear jar. I'm gonna open the fuel valve and I'm gonna drain the fuel. So we can see that the fuel is actually draining out. So we know that this is not a fuel delivery issue because it appears that the fuel is flowing nicely. It'll also give us a nice chance to see if there's any water in the fuel. Because again, if you're running fuel with ethanol in it, ethanol is a grain alcohol and alcohol will attract water. So you may end up with some water at the bottom of your fuel tank. And then obviously because the fuel valve is at the bottom of of your fuel tank, all the water will then go into your carburetor. So it may also be some water in your fuel that you're experiencing. So like I said, I'm gonna let that drain and then we're gonna blow out the line. And while your fuel is draining in a well-ventilated area, it's a good time to go ahead and open your fuel cap and remove your screen. We can see that there is in fact some sediment in the bottom of this filter. I'm gonna clean that out. So by draining the first bit of fuel into a clear jar, you'll be able to let it sit and see if there is in fact any water. It doesn't look like there's any in this fuel. So I've gone ahead and started to drain the rest of the fuel tank into a jerry can. And like I said, I'm just going to blow out the line now. Make sure there's no sediment in that fuel valve. Now that I have my carburetor clean, I'm going to blow that out with a compressor. Okay, and if we look through our pickup jet here, we can see that it is clean and free of debris and we can actually see through it now. So this is just a little before and after so you guys can see the difference. So we're gonna reinstall that pickup jet then we're gonna hang our float and our needle valve and then we're gonna go ahead and put our float bowl back on. And pressure testing this needle valve, we can see that we are right on five PSI and it's holding steady. So that means that our needle jet is sealing like it did before. I always double check that. If you don't have one of these carburetor pressure testers, you can go ahead and just blow into your fuel inlet right there. You'll lift your float up, you'll be able to hear some air coming out and when it seats back down into the seated position you shouldn't hear anything now the spark plug cleaned up all right it looks okay to me so i'm going to put it back in another reason why i'm not replacing it is because i don't actually have a replacement plug for this it's a weird number it comes up as that uh, e6 trc which is a torch plug even though this is labeled as a bosch but if you're ever wondering how i look up my spark plugs or what spark plug i can use to replace one that i take out i use sparkplugcrossreference.com you can go in there type in your spark plug number and it will come 
come up with a list of spark plugs that you can use. And additionally, you can go onto Google and just type in Furman ADCC manual. You should be able to pull up a manual and on that manual, you should have a list of not only what spark plugs you can run, but the specifications for your oil. And in this case, it takes 380 milliliters or 0.38 liters. So that's going to be the oil that we run. Once I get this thing running, I'm going to warm it up and change the oil. Okay, the spark plug's back in. I've cleaned out the screen, so I'm going to pop that back in as well. So I'm now ready to reinstall our carburetor back onto my machine. So the first thing I'm going to do is hook up the spring because that's the last thing we did. Then I'm going to slide the carburetor onto the two studs, and then we're going to go ahead and hook up the throttle linkage, and then we'll plug in the fuel line. Just remember that the spring goes into the first hole and the throttle linkage goes into the larger hole at the back. Fuel line also looks like it's in excellent condition, so I didn't have to worry about replacing that. I got my fuel line clamp on there now and I'm ready to reinstall my air box. And with your air box reinstalled, now's a good time to plug your breather tube back into the engine. Make sure that's properly routed, give it a little twist. Now we can go ahead and take our plate here and pop that into position. Again, making sure that little blockage is up on the top left. Go ahead and take your air filter if it's clean and pop that back in and we're ready to put the air cover back on. And using my no spill jerry can, I've put one liter of fresh fuel in it with some K100S plus fuel stabilizer. So I'm gonna wheel this thing outside and we're gonna fire it up. Okay, so I'm gonna fire this thing up. Okay, so if you find yourself in a position like I am where we've cleaned the carburetor, we know that everything is clean and free of debris, especially the pilot jet, you can go ahead and make the hole in the pilot jet slightly larger. That will make your fuel ratio slightly richer, but only on idle. And the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna use a micro drill bit set similar to this one here with a little micro drill bit chuck. And you can see here we have a small drill bit the size that I'm going to use, going to be a 16 thousandths of an inch. It's the third one down there. And all I've done is made that hole slightly larger. So if I go into here, my set is a 14 and a half thousandths of an inch, and that fit into the pilot jet here and we've moved up to a 16 thou. So we've only increased it by one and a half thousandths of an inch. So let's see if she fires. That sounds a bit better. Now you'll notice that not only did I test the machine under idle, but I also tested it under a load using just an angle grinder there plugged in. It just had to heat up. It is fairly cold out here, so I do believe that little bit of surging is probably due to the weather, but once this thing is warmed up, it runs perfect. So I'm assuming that it'll run perfect during spring, summer, or fall time. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain the oil from that dipstick tube right there using my Pella oil extractor. If you guys wanna see how this works, you can click in the top right of your screen. I'll link you to my product review of that oil extractor. And then once I have all the oil drained out of here, I'm going to fill this up with 380 milliliters of 10W30 because my customer did say that he primarily uses this machine in spring, summer, and fall time. So if it was specifically being used in winter, I would probably suggest a 5W30. However, because it's going to be run in the summer months, we're going to stick with a premium 10W30. So that's it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. We ended up getting this generator running good. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and drain and change the oil for him. If you guys want to think about subscribing, you can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure you stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.